What hit me the most is always the choices people are forced to, to make. And some of these choices, I think no one should be put in that position to make them. I mean, one of the, um, in my recent visit to Iraq, my own home country, and I met a guy who, a Yazidi guy, who uh, you know, was one of the last people in his town to hear that ISIS is coming. So in a rush, he puts all 28 members of his family in a pickup truck, his mom and his wife next to him in the front seat, and he, cha he drives fast, and ISIS chase him in the process. And in the process of the chasing, he goes into a dirt road and lots of bumps and all of that, and he sees his own four-year-old daughter falling off the truck. And he has to choose in that moment, does he stop the truck and pick up the daughter, but ISIS actually will catch him and will kill all of the family? Or does he keep on driving and let the daughter uh, out? And these choices, I mean, this guy, <sighs> You know, I tell, every time I hear this, I tell the story, I get touched. No one, no parent, no mother, no father should be able to make that choice. He's both ashamed of his choice, but also understands that he thinks that he made the right choice to save the rest of his family. And he is coexisting with that. It's in a state where he's paused in that moment. And so, it's always, when you see with refugees, it's always people who are forced to make these decisions where they're leaving their children behind, leaving their life, their pictures, their, fam their homes. Their, you know, we talk about refugees as if they like being refugees. It's the most humiliating, indignified process of, of uh, going through. Right, right.